Hello everyone, welcome back to my all-country tour in Microsoft Flight Sim, where I'm flying through all the countries of the world during the 2024 Olympics. These were all done during Twitch live streams, and so the YouTube videos will be a bit delayed. This is the fourth flight going from Chile all the way up to Panama, uh, going through Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia along the way. And here I am taking off from El Loa in the middle of the Atacama Desert in Chile. Very, very dry place, the driest place in the world. And adjusting my fuel tanks there on the F-111 by Avia Sim HD slash GKS. That is the plane I'll be flying for all of the flights. In real time, as I'm recording this voiceover, I have done 21 out of 25 planned flights. Originally there were 27, but I cut that down because the range of the F-111 seems long enough that I can get some of the flights together instead of having 27. And so I'm pretty much done in real time, which is good because I'm recording this voiceover with only two days left. <laughs> so I want to make sure to get it done during the Olympics. But here we are, the Atacama Desert in Chile. You can see another F-111 flying alongside there. That was Pekka during the live stream flying with me. Uh, sometimes you'll see comments on the left-hand side. That was the during stream, during live stream comments. Uh, sorry about those. You'll just have to ignore those because you won't have the context for it. I had originally planned to put the entire videos on YouTube, but that didn't seem like it was interesting to viewers at all so uh but that's why i put the comments and left the comments over there so that viewers if they were watching the full stream would get the context but anyway here we are in bolivia and uh, bolivia has these salt flats and that was an uh, interesting feature as we entered bolivia and then i made a turn over la paz that's la paz and then on into Peru. So just a little bit of Bolivia here, but uh, some of the more important parts of Bolivia. And there we have Lake Titicaca in front of us on the border of Bolivia and Peru. Yes, that's what it's called. And it is looking pretty good up here. And then after that, I head over to Cusco, uh, one of my favorite cities to fly over because that, it's at 11,000 feet. Take that, Denver. It's two miles up and it's very scenic. I believe it was the capital of the Incas, so very lofty sort of place. And here we are flying over it, nestled between those mountains, this little valley here. Fairly populous. And in front of it, there's also a very prominent mountain. And that mountain is a Mount Salcante. That I don't think I'm gonna be able to pronounce it properly or anything. S A L C A N T A Y, Salcante. That seems like Salcante. Uh, but right in front of us, you can sort of see it on the horizon there poking out. It's 20,574 feet, uh, but it's it's not that high uh, it, compared to the rest of the Andes. It's the 38th highest peak in the Andes and only the 12th highest in Peru, but it just sort of juts out there. I mean, it's very prominent. So even though it's not very high, the context makes it so that it is sort of majestic. And as we get closer to it, we are also getting closer to Machu Picchu. Taking the Salcante tra Trail or Trek is one way of getting to Machu Picchu. And I just sort of like this view. So there we are. So Salcante there. And then we'll hang a right to Machu Picchu. And of course, to get a good look at Machu Picchu, I have to go slower again, extend the wings forward and slow down. So here on that ridge is Machu Picchu. Yeah, it doesn't look like the easiest place to get to, does it? <laughs> anyway, there it is. Okay, so that was Machu Picchu. I don't do a whole lot of sightseeing during this trip. The goal is to fly over every country, not necessarily to see every site because that would take a lot longer. Uh, but yeah, uh, certain sites, especially since Machu Picchu is so high up, it's a little bit more convenient uh, to get back to altitude once you see it. So here we are in Ecuador. The lighting conditions weren't great because it was later in the day. And so we are headed to Quito, the capital of Ecuador. That was the aim point for this particular leg. And Quito is down there somewhere in the middle of the clouds, but not the best sighting ever. And again, the lighting conditions made it so that sort of hazy rather than clear. And then on into Colombia. And for Colombia, I went along the mountain range there. So there's a lot of cities in Colombia, but 
it didn't get a particularly good look at any one of them. There was a point of interest in the middle of Columbia that I was trying to look at, but it wasn't visible from a great height. It was a sort of physical feature. It was like a cliff face or something like that. Uh, well, some sort of big rock, but yeah, couldn't see it very clearly. Anyway, here I am landing in Panama, flying by Panama City first, and the Panama Canal does not look good. I know there's Panama Canal scenery, special payware scenery, scenery for it, but that's a little bit of a shame that they didn't do the Panama Canal, which is very complicated and sort of nice to look at, and of course a major feature of this area. But uh, we have some other monuments here. I don't know if they were added by the game by default or by some uh, mod pack that I had added from flightsim.to, possibly the latter. But we have these buildings here, and they're looking okay. I'm glad to have them, that's for sure. I'm glad to have something around here. Yep, so there they are. And then after taking a good look at them, I went across the canal, uh, taking a look at this bridge. This is the Bridge of the Americas. And I verify that that's the case by zooming into the map there, trying to get the name in the Sky for Sim thing. The reason I have the Sky for Sim thing up is not for my navigation. It's actually to show people where I am. So that's to make it clear where we're at. And I'm, I'm using a little nav map off to the side on a different monitor for navigation. This was a bit of an iffy sort of landing, but here we are. And also on sky for sim you can see when I land the touchdown rate. So you can see right there the feet per minute and also the speed. All right, so with that I take my parking space and then on to the next flight. So it'll be the fifth flight and we'll be taking off from here from Panama City. And we are going to be going up to Tampico in Mexico. However, I had forgotten about Aruba. Now Aruba's I mean, whether Aruba is a country or not is a complicated thing. So I had that flight path uh, plotted there, but we're going to deviate from that in order to go to Aruba as we take off here from Panama City. And uh, Aruba is part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, which is why it wasn't part of the original plot. But it's considered an independent country and it's participating in the Olympics separately. And so I decide, well, if they're participating in the Olympics separately, I want to get everybody who is participating in the Olympics. Uh, there's one exception, Bermuda. Uh, I wasn't going to go out to Bermuda especially. So, sorry, Bermuda. B Bermuda is also not a country. It's, uh, it's definitely not a country. It's uh, British overseas territory. So, sorry, Bermuda. But Aruba is technically considered a country under the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Now, the Kingdom of the Netherlands also has three other little countries, uh, but they don't have independent... Uh, Olympic teams and I'm going like so apologies to them uh, but Aruba is standing in for all of them <laughs> uh, yeah that's just how it's gonna be I went to Aruba and I went to Costa Rica and then I flew over Nicaragua and then here's El Salvador and again you can follow along on the map if I don't mention specifically but here we are finally getting back on to our Central American tour but yeah I really only count Aruba as separate because it was in the Olympics with a separate team, so that will be a consideration. All right, so Guatemala, I tried to look at Guatemala City, and then I did a big turn towards Belize. And Belize looks like this. Uh, the, the lighting conditions at this altitude made it so that it's not the crispest view of Belize, though I did get a nice view of the coastline. There's some, some stuff going on down there. but. I wasn't satisfied with my clipping of Honduras. We only got a little tiny bit of it, so I decided to fly a bonus bit of Honduras here before turning to the Cayman Islands. Now, the Cayman Islands is another one of these places. It's not a country. Uh, Aruba is more of a country than the Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands is a British overseas territory like Bermuda, uh, but it also has an independent Olympic team. So I decided to go fly over the Cayman Islands, which is another diversion. There it is, the Cayman Islands. Uh, well, Grand Cayman anyway, and then I had to do a turnaround here and back to Mexico. So I decided to land at Tampico in Kerbal Space Program. I have my space center at Tampico and I picked the location because it was a good location. And also it sort of reminded me of Cape Canaveral in many ways. It has a Florida feel to it. Tampico, the city itself, sort of has 
the feel of Orlando if Orlando was on the coast. But anyway, that was a rough landing though. Okay, maybe there were winds. I'm not sure. I don't have that information anymore. But okay, so that was the landing at Tampico to conclude the fifth flight and parking. So next we have a long flight that doesn't involve many countries. Uh, sorry for going quickly over the Central American countries, but we really did go very quickly through the Central American countries. Here we're going very slow over some big countries. Uh, I mean, obviously still going Mach 2. Uh, generally, the flights are at Mach 2.2. So about the same as the Concorde uh, is the speed that I'm going at here. And actually, this has about the range of the Concorde that can do that kind of flight. Anything that the Concorde can do, this can do, basically. So... And it can probably go a little bit faster, but I'm not pushing it. So out from Tampico, and it's a nice sort of vistas, and across Mexico to the United States. Now, I took off from Cape Canaveral in the first flight, so I sort of already covered the United States, but there's no avoiding that I have to sort of get across the Pacific, and I don't want to cross a whole lot of water to do it, so I'm going north. But we also didn't do Canada yet, so I have to go through the United States again to get to Canada. So here we are approaching the border with uh, Arizona. It's the Arizona part of the U.S.-Mexico border. And on into California. I decided not to deviate from the more straight line path. I've been to Los Angeles quite a lot in flight sims, so it's okay. But I did take a backward view of Edwards Air Force Base. That's Edwards Air Force Base. And I also didn't directly overfly the San Francisco Bay Area, but it's over there to my left there. And uh, I saw Mount Shasta in the distance there along the way up. Um, and then finally, Seattle was sort of covered in clouds. Seattle's down there. You can sort of take a peek at it. I should have just cleared up the clouds, to be honest, uh, especially when we got to Vancouver. So we're now in Canada. And so Canada is counted. Check that off the list. And yeah, you should have gotten a better view of Vancouver, but... Up the west coast of British Columbia, I got to Alaska here, and then on to Anchorage. So the landing is in Anchorage, and this is how that was. Setting up there, and coming in. I'm trying to push the range of this as much as possible, and ultimately I decide that I don't even need the external tanks for the flights that I have planned. It can go more than 4,000 nautical miles even without the external tanks as long as it has fuel tanks in the weapons bay. So, here we are. And the fuel tanks in the weapons bay are better because they don't add extra drag to the thing. So, I get my parking spot in Anchorage. Well, I, I don't think I actually got a proper parking spot. I didn't have a little green box for some reason. I don't know why. But anyway, I parked here. And the seventh flight. So this is going all the way to Tokyo. And there's even fewer countries involved here. I'm taking off from Alaska. And we're going to overfly Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia. And so that'll cover Russia. Now Russia doesn't have a, an Olympic team this time because they were excluded. Uh, it was Russia and Belarus that were excluded from the Olympics this time. But they're still a country, so I'm including them. And so we will fly over Kamchatka as our Russian portion. I'm definitely not going to fly over the whole thing. That's too much. Kamchatka is just going to have to do. Hopefully that's fair. But I'm ultimately landing in Japan, in Tokyo. So that's it. Basically, the new countries involved in this particular leg of the journey are Russia and Japan. So we also... Uh, Pekka is still there flying with me during this live stream. And... I decided to go to Kodiak Island to check out the site of the Kodiak spaceport, which features some of the smaller rockets that try to make orbit, uh, generally without too much success, unfortunately. But this is the location of that spaceport. Didn't really get a good look of any, at any facilities here. That's hardly a surprise, but at least I got a sense of the surroundings. Not as icy as it might be at different seasons, but basically that's where it is. All right, so Kodiak Spaceport, everyone. And then on I go. I decided not to go along the Aleutian Islands. I went northerly because that's shorter, so closer to the Bering Strait. And then very quickly, well, quickly enough, not very quickly, 
quickly enough, I got to Kamchatka. And so here we are flying over Kamchatka. And there was, a, I guess, it, is it a volcano? It's pointy topped. It doesn't have a sort of caldera there. But yeah, there are some mountains on Kamchatka that I took a look at. Nothing too amazing though, but that one was prominent. And then soon enough over the coast and on to Japan. And here I am approaching the coast of Hokkaido, the North Island of Japan. Well, there are other smaller islands, but it's the northerly main island and then approaching Tokyo. So I decided to do some sightseeing around Tokyo. There's high altitude. I had to uh, take some loops to let Tokyo load because at this speed it is very very choppy. You'll see it's very choppy but I try to give it some time as much as I can. And so circling around and getting a little bit closer with Tokyo's sky tree there. I do remember it's 634 meters. I forget what that is in feet close to 2000. And then heading in. Tokyo has all this photogrammetry, might as well enjoy it. And I basically wanted to head towards Tokyo Tower, the old sort of broadcasting tower for Tokyo, before heading into the airport, which is Haneda. So, with that done, here is the landing at Haneda Airport. Runway 34 right, and let's see how this goes. Eek. Off to the left for some reason. Yeah, well, something caught me by surprise there. So a little bit squirrely on the landing here. I have to activate the nose wheel steering button. I hadn't done that yet. Uh, but here we are taking the parking spot at Haneda Airport in Tokyo, and that was the conclusion of the seventh flight. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.